Hi, I'm Lindsay. Welcome to my channel, Always Yarn First. Uh, today I'm doing a special video all about my craft cart. Um, I have a craft cart from Ikea that I use all over my house. And when I travel somewhere by car for a week, I bring it with me. And I'm getting ready for a trip to visit my grandma. So I am getting ready to pack my cart up so that it's able to take with me on my trip. So I'm gonna give you a little tour of what is on my cart, why I think it is the best tool I have, basically. So I'm gonna insert a picture here of what my cart looks like. I got this from Ikea and I just looked today and they have these for about $40. They do have other ones you can get that are similar from any craft store, Michaels, Joann's, um, I think even like Walmart and Target have their kind. Um, I love mine from Ikea. It's very sturdy. Um, so I'm going to give you a little tour of them. So basically, by looking at the picture here, you can tell that mostly on the middle and uh, bottom of my cart is my project bags. So I'm not going to go through all of those. You'll have to turn into the the actual podcast to see what's all in my making bags here. But I will say before I go on a trip, the one thing I will do is go through my bags and uh, if there's a project, like I took off a couple that I'm currently working on that need a lot of focus or attention. Um, I'm not going to do that at my grandma's. I want something that is mostly mindless that I can visit with her, help her out with things, not have to focus on, you know, picking up stitches for an entire sweater or something like that. So I take those projects off. So I'm going to show you what's on these other two uh, shelves here. And then we'll talk about the top, which has the most stuff. So on the bottom of the cart, I have this tool. This is pretty new to me. So I open this up. And it's basically a stand. Um, it comes with a Bluetooth remote. For my phone and then I can move this. I've used this for taking uh, videos of me knitting. So I can put my phone on here. It also has a light on here which is really handy but I love this especially because it is so portable. So it's not like a giant tool. I can just fold it right down and it fits right on my cart. So I love it. Um, I recently got this on Amazon, so I will put the link below to that if you're interested in that. Um, also, I have in this little bag, I had won this in a giveaway, I think from Cozy Up Knits. Um, I basically have cords, not really exciting, but in a cute bag. Pretty much um, different things that I have on my card that you'll see to charge things. I make sure I have all the cords for those things also on my cart. Normally isn't a big deal when I'm at home, but when I'm traveling, I don't want to have to think, oh, this this device needed charged and now it's worthless to me because I don't have the cords. So I make sure I have all my cords with me. Okay, on the middle shelf, besides project bags, I have this, which is my Canon Ivy printer. So for my projects, when I'm finished with them, I take little pictures and I print them out on here. They come out on little sticky paper and I put them in my knitting journal for the year. Um, so those I just like to have um, at the end of the year, I can see, flip through and see all, everything that I've completed during the year. So that is on here along with extra printing paper, which is in here also. And that all came in one piece and I'm pretty sure I might have gotten this on Amazon too. So. And then I have this little, just little container here. I think I got from Target in like a three pack. I have another one on the top of my um, cart. So first of all, I have stickers in here. Now the, the only ones I really use are these ones in the front that I've got from Etsy. They're little numbers on yarn balls. They go up to 63. And they're from Purple Panda Planner. You can see on the bottom there in her Etsy store. And she's always great. I found these last year. She only had up to this, this many, 31. And I asked if she could double it and make me bigger numbers so I could use them for my finished 
projects for the year. So as you can see, I've used up through 18, which means I have 18 completed projects this year. Um, so yeah, I use these in my journal, which you will see shortly. Um, I do have other stickers in here. I used to have a bigger uh, knitting journal planner where I did lots of cute stickers and stuff, and I just find I didn't need it. So I still have them here, but I don't really use them. All right, so the other thing I have on here is these interchangeable needles. This is from Knit Picks. This is the options uh, short inter interchangeable set. So this I also won from a make-along from Professor Pearl. No, she gave me another set. These ones are the short ones. Sorry. These ones, the great thing about these is if you can see, they're all short. And then the cords they come with makes these all exactly 16 inch needles. So for me, this is perfect for me making sleeves. So I use these all the time for my sleeve machine. They're fantastic. The other thing I have in here, it's a two-parter, is DPNs. So the first thing I have is in this set, which is from Chowgu. So this is size zero through three of DPNs and a little gauge. So I have that, and then in here, my love of music coming through, my friend Melissa got me this. Um, I have sizes four through 10. I have one set of each size because I have found sometimes you just need a small space where it's easier to use a DPN. I don't love DPNs, but I find they are useful sometimes for certain things. So I like to have one of every size. So I do. And the other kind of weird thing I have in this here is these, which is basically like finger slings. So I don't know if I'm the only one, but I sometimes get finger pain. And so it's like I need to keep my fingers straight. And so I have these different finger slings that just kind of help me, kind of like a wrist brace, which I also have, which isn't in my cart, but should be. I think it is by my bedside table. Um, but I keep these finger slings because sometimes I'm just having a finger pain. And so I will wear the finger slings for a little bit just to kind of help out with the pain. So that is all that's on the bottom two shelves of my cart. So I'm gonna give a close up now of what is on the top of my cart. Okay, so here is a view of the top of my cart. It kind of looks a little crazy this way, but this way I can kind of talk to you as I show you what's in it. So let's start over here. So first I have my sock ruler which I love. I am a cuff down sock person. So after I do the heel, this is how I can tell how far I stick it in the heel and I can tell how far I need to knit before I do the toes. Um, this is a uh, pattern by Knitty Natty. I keep this in the cart because if you've watched my podcast for a while, I am making out of row one minis little scrappy granny squares um, and then attaching them to eventually make uh, throw for my king size bed. This is a free pattern, so I'm not giving anything away here, but I just kind of keep it in here because it's been a while since I've worked on it, but that way when I do want to, I have it in here. And then I have these pocket guides, which I love. So I had found these two at Joann's ages ago. Um, and what these are, if you've never seen these, is just kind of the basics. It has needles, different abbreviations, a lot of the basic stitches of knitting. It's on the front and back. Some increases, decreases, joining new yarn. So I don't really need this, but I don't know if you're like me, but some days you have, um, your brain is not remembering a certain thing and you're just like need a visual. I love this because of the pictures here with the stitches. So I keep these 
just to keep them. I will never get rid of them. And then obviously the same with crochet, some different stitches. And this is great because I don't do crochet as much. So if I don't work on it for months and then I'm like, is this a double crochet or is this a triple? I don't remember. So I love these so much. Um, they're produced by Leisure Arts. Uh, you can see at least at one time they were $4.95. Uh, I had lost this crochet one and I ended up buying another one off of Amazon. And then I got another one, have not used this at all. Again, if you've watched my previous podcast, I had bought an embroidery kit, beginner kit. I would love to learn embroidery. And when I realized they had one of these for embroidery, I bought it immediately. I hope to eventually use it, but I haven't yet. But these just fit in right there. So then in the back, hanging out here, this is another free pattern, so don't worry, I'm not giving anything away. This is my pattern for my chevron blanket. If you've been following me, um, this is just the repeat I work on, uh, row one and two, just nonstop. So I keep this here in the front because that way I have my cart facing me. And again, if I have a moment where I forget what I'm doing, I can just glance at it right here and see it. Okay, and these are my two knitting books. So I'll show you how I use these. This is just a basic planner. This is the one where I used to put it on a big planner notebook, but I've condensed it down. So how I use this is I like to write every day what patterns I touch. Um, that's all. It's, it's nothing like, oh, I've done four rows on this. If I pick up and do five stitches, I usually write it down that I've worked on it. I also um, put it when I've cast something on and then when I have finished something uh, to give me an idea my next notebook where I keep my finished objects in. I also keep track of my yarn. When I get yarn in for the month, I put it up there. I just mark it as I get it. And when I finish a ball of yarn from a project or I gift it or I give it away for a prize or something, I keep track of that. So, and then I also write, this is helpful when I write when I podcast because I can look back between weeks and be like, okay, what are the projects I've actually worked on since my last podcast? And I can very easily take the things off that I haven't touched. So this is how I use that book. That's pretty much it. Sometimes I put goals over there, but yeah. So here's my May. It's kind of a mess of what things I've worked on. And then my big notebook is this one. And this, so at the beginning, I kind of write what my make nine was, which I usually never keep to. Um, although I have started on one, almost finished with another one and have another one as a whip. So I have pretty much three out of nine of those going on. Um, my other personal goals, and then if there's make alongs, um, knit alongs, crochet alongs, make alongs um, on Instagram. I keep track of what they are in here, who's hosting them, and when they end. Uh, so that when I post on Instagram, I'm like, oh, isn't that for a make along I'm doing? And then, of course, my two that I'm hosting for the year. And then every month, I have a page where I write everything I've cast on. So you saw from my other notebook how it's easy to see when I did that and then what I finished for the month. And then I have my total stats. So for January, you see that. And then each project that's finished gets a page. I don't do overly a lot of details. I don't put snippets of yarn like I've seen other makers do. I just put the pattern, who it's by, when I started and finished, what yarn, what needle, a picture of it, and my little sticker. So I just have those for each one for that month. So then when I'm transitioning for February here, I have goals on one side and then I have the same thing you saw here, but then my yarn in and out is a little different. So this is my monthly for February, what came in, what went out. And then this is my total for the year where I'm at. 
So that's pretty much all I do with that. So let's see where I'm at here. May. See, I haven't been using this for my goals. I've been doing it um, on my Google Docs now. Uh, but May, this is what I've cast on so far. And then I do have, I just kind of updated this, but I haven't put pictures in yet of my finished objects. I did finish my rocket tee. So yeah, that is kind of my, my big projects for the year. I love having those where I can see what I've all worked at. And it kind of is neat to, to see what I'm kind of gravitating toward at the moment. You know, last year was a big year of socks for me. And this year, in fact, I have a couple sock whips or even like um, yarn that I uh, balled up but haven't used for socks because I just haven't been interested. So, all right. So... Let's do the other side. Basically, I just have some hand lotions. I have this handy little thing, which has everything from uh, stitch stoppers to row counter, uh, stitch markers, progress keepers, a various assortment. And these I just got at Hobby Lobby where you can stack them however many you want on top of each other. I find these to be easy. Um, I also have my lacrosse ball. I learned a long time ago from Nitty Natty. She uses this as like a massage tool. A lot of time if my arm is hurting, I'll put this on my desk and roll my arm on the lacrosse ball. So I like to have that close by because again, I get lots of um, joint pain and stuff. I have my cocoa knits. If I want to use this magnet thing, if I can want to put uh, their pins or I can also put this on here so that magnet just kind of sticks there so yeah I have a water bottle sitting here because I have two dogs and a cat and sometimes when they're misbehaving uh, they really don't like to be squirted with water so I kind of keep that close to me wherever I sit um, on the other side I have some Bluetooth headphones sitting here um, that way if my family's in the living room here where I'm at I'm watching TV, I can put my headphones on, or if I'm up early in the morning, I can put my headphones on. All right, so this one here, I have another Bluetooth headphones, usually when I'm on the phone, I have those. I have a little container with kind of like my sewing tape measure, some stitch markers. I have this, which is supposed to be used like for color work. I have never used it yet, I don't know how well it works. I have some Portuguese knitting pins, just some basic ones in here. If you've ever tried Portuguese knitting, actually on the side of my cart over here on my magnet is my good one I use with Portuguese knitting. It is a magnet. So you put it on your shirt, put the magnet behind, and you do the yarn through here. If you Okay, so behind here I have my little rainbow foot chart for pressure points <laughs> this is my chow Gu needle gauge because um, most of the needles i use is chow Gu interchangeable uh, the red lace so i keep one of these in here and this is from ann bud this is a cool little um gauge stitch marker so you just lay this over your gauge it's white and black depending on if your yarn is lighter or darker you can see it and you can just match up your stitches over uh, the over top of their stitches like this and see what your gauge is and then there's also a ruler on the side so um, I have eye drops I got this little thing last year when we went to Magnolia and I just have miscellaneous little things. A lot of my little crochet things. So when I drop a stitch, um, I have those in there. I have my darning needles, my scissors. I have some fingernail clippers and some space pins in here. And they all just sit in my little Magnolia mug. This, again, I haven't used, but I have done my first beading project. This was a little kit I got from Laura Nelkin. Uh, with like a little jewelry kit. This comes with a little bead set to help you uh, 
uh, help with your beading on your knitting. So I like to keep that on there, again, so I just don't lose it. And then I have a couple sets. Um, I have the Knitting Barber cords and Pearl String cords. They're essentially the same thing. The cords you put on your to hold your stitches on, you can knit right off of them. You can put them on to try on your, your sweater so that you don't lose your stitches. So I have um, my favorite colors. I have blue and I have orange, and those are great. So just the little white container left. I have just a little notebook and some pins and a pencil if I need to take some notes. I keep a little post-it container because I am a paper pattern girl. Um, I have tried Knit Companion. I don't love it. Um, I use like little uh, stitch counter things, knitting apps on my phone. But otherwise, I like a paper pattern. I just I can't help it. So I use post-its a lot to follow my progress down a pattern. So I go through those quite a bit. And then I got this from Dyed in the Wool. I love this little container. It again, has lots of stuff. I like to keep my cocoa knits, um, the small and the regular size ones, in here. I find with a lot of sweaters where you're uh, mapping out different uh, breaks in your sweater, I do them by color and then I highlight those colors on my pattern so I know I'm at the right stitch marker. If I have to put it down, I highlight it in yellow, orange, whatever. Um, so yeah, I just have lots of different stitch markers, again, progress keepers, special things, end stoppers for uh, my needles. And that is great. I have a fingernail file. I have some Neosporin because I have a cat, again, who has full claws and sometimes likes to climb up on me as I'm knitting and I need Neosporin. I have a, my row counter from Coco Knits again. And then in here I have lots of tape measures. I have lip balms. I have some DC floss in bright colors in case I need to put some stitches on hold or if I want to put in a lifeline for something. I have bright colors so I can very much see it. I have some white out. I also have like a stitch holder here. And then I have these different ones. I had a couple more of these, but I have my wrap and turn. I have my make one left and right. And I have my um, telling you what yarn weight you have here. These are all made by Katrinkles. So that is it for my cart. Okay, so that is my crafty cart. Um, by the way, I have a name for my cart. My cart I have called Cardi A. So Cartier, because, you know, the girl's best friend. And it's my first cart, so cart A. <laughs> Just kind of a play, a fun play on words. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you found it helpful. I thought, you know, it could, maybe could give you some inspiration if you're looking into getting a craft cart or something like that. Um, the one thing I do want to say is, so the other thing that when I travel with my cart, my cart can be strapped into the seat belt. So I literally put it in the back seat and buckle my cart in and it doesn't move. Again, this is just with the Ikea cart. I don't know the sizes and dimensions of other craft carts, but this one works really well for that. Um, and then I just basically take all the things that are on the top and put them down flat. Um, I have a board that also comes from Ikea. It's a, technically a cutting board but it fits exactly over the top of the cart. So I put that on the top so all the small things are secure. And then the other one thing I do grab is I usually will grab my interchangeable needles and put them on the cart because I probably won't need them. But if I maybe just work on one project and I fly through it that week, then I'm like, oh, I wish I would have brought my correct size to do the ribbing or whatever. So I just put these flat on my other uh, shelf to bring with me. And then I literally have pretty much everything I could need for my knitting and having a crafty week while I'm gone. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I look forward to seeing you again next week on my podcast. Bye.